the Jaws Obsession Express for another ride, another episode. Thank you very much for returning. Welcome back to the world's number one Jaws Universe broadcast. This is Ryan Daco, author of the Book of Quint and your ship's captain on this voyage into discovery, where, as always, we are here to share with you, prove to you, convince you, or remind you that Jaws is the greatest movie of all time. Thank you for returning for episode 69, The Brody Boys. How old are Mike and Sean Brody in Jaws? This is a question that was posed to me by a listener out there in the Jaws Obsession that emailed into the show. And when when looking at that, I wanted to see, can we look at the details in Jaws and Jaws 2 to extract an answer to this question? And this is going to be a little bit of a groundbreaking episode here on the Jaws Obsession in that this will be the start of incorporating Jaws 2 to answer this question as we start expanding the Jaws universe. Remember, it's not just Jaws. We're also going to be dealing with Jaws 2 as well as the prequel, The Book of Quint. We are going to be incorporating all of that under this um umbrella, which is called the Jaws Obsession, in order to get to know the characters better in the movie Jaws. That's what we have to do. We have to open up that lens. We're going to look at it from a bird's eye view and see if we can extract more details and more enjoyment into our favorite movie of all time, Jaws. Kinetic Energy. Before we get into that, we have to talk about the kinetic energy that is on the ground here at the Jaws Obsession. The world is a buzz right now in that the Book of Quint is having a worldwide release. That's right. If you haven't heard the last episode where we broke the news, we're going to have new details every episode. Every week, I'm getting more and more details onto dates, times, events, new sites are listing the book, new vendors. Let's just start off and let's just get this all out there right now. The latest on what is happening with the Book of Quint, Amberly Publishing, has acquired the worldwide rights to the Book of Quint, and they have started their rollout process. Now, what we announced in the last one is that it was starting to um, it was starting to appear on sites in the UK and in Europe. So, since the last episode, it was announced that there is a new cover for the Book of Quint. The paperback version is going to have this stunning gold cover that the uh, CEO of Amberly Publishing, Nick Hayward, definitely made the right call. He is showing that he comes from a marketing background that he chose to go with a gold cover. It really stands out. I've, I've received so many compliments from the listeners and the readers out there 
Uh, they're looking forward to this new cover. It's exciting to see. They also just added our first blurb from, if you listened to the last episode in episode 68, I read the review from author Adrian McKenna. Great review. Well, uh, Amberly Publishing has taken a line from that review, and now that graces the cover of the Book of Quint. It's going to really jump out at the reader or at someone walking by a bookshelf. They're going to see this. It's going to attract them. So Amberly Publishing continues to deliver. Latest round this last week, I finished a small eighth revision of the Book of Quint where I went through to correct some historical inaccuracies or little things that were caught that I had to make just tighten up, just tighten it up a bit. And then I turned that over. So the files have been turned over to my editor over at Amberly Publishing. So that was a breath of relief for me to actually send it off and to be able to say there, the publisher now has the manuscript. I have faith that it is in good hands from now on. The version that you will be seeing from all those early Book of Quint readers, the backers to the Indiegogo campaign, remember there were only 300 of those were made. The differences are going to be very small but subtle, and there's a reason why a lot of those were made. I'm not going to talk about those now. But what you will be getting in the stores, the paperback version of the Book of Quint, will be the most complete version of the Book of Quint. It will be tightened up, uh, spelling errors, as well as the dates and times, and just historical things that are just uh, tightened up. So uh, I couldn't be happier with what I sent off. It's great to see that it is in good hands over there at Amberley. If you follow us over at the book at, at Book of Quint over at Instagram.com, at Book of Quint, I made the announcement yesterday, the Book of Quint is going to have a worldwide release. The, the dates are as follows. November 15th, 2023, the book is going to be released in the United Kingdom, Australia, Europe, and Japan. That will be known as the wide release of the Book of Quint. It will then be available and it will be released to a retail in January 23rd, 2024 in the United States and Canada. Why the delay? Let's talk about the delay. It's because right now you have to look at if you are in the United States or Canada, the Book of Quint is going to be an import. These books are going to be made in England, and it takes time for the logistics to get them in the distribution centers in North America and then spread out to those vendors and then delivered to you. So, so that's why the delay between the November 15th and the January 23rd dates. Now, I was just informed, this is hot off the presses, I was just informed that the ebook, there will be an ebook to the Book of Quint. That is going to be, uh, e all ebook editions are available through the following formats in your country Kindle, iTunes, Kobo, Google, and Nook. So the Book of Quint will be available on Kindle, iTunes, Kobo, Google, and Nook. That you're going to be able to get those through Amazon or Nook by Barnes and Noble and uh, Kobo as well. From what I was told, those will be available on November 15th, 2023. So you will have access to the Book of Quint to the digital format November 15th, 2023, as well as a printed copy. For those looking for a Christmas present, for those in the United States and Canada looking for a uh, to gift the Book of Quint as maybe Christmas presents, what you should do then is go through a vendor in the UK. You can order through Amazon UK, Waterstones, and there's also independent bookshops over in the UK. We have Kohl's Books, but you can go and pre-order right now over there, and when the book is released in November 15th, it will be shipped to you, and it will get to you before Christmas, before the holiday times, just in time for you to gift that to a friend or family and spread Christmas cheer in the form of the backstory to our favorite fisherman, Quint. And I did receive one email was asking, I, I, I think someone, someone asked um, possibly on Instagram if I was going to be shipping these out. No, I am done in the shipping business. So that's, uh, I will not be shipping these out from my basement as the 300 books were. This is going to be a much wider release and a much heavier workload. We are now in the, in the, we are in the big leagues now. This is a massive rollout that's going to be happening. Now pre-order. The Book of Quinn is for sale right now. If you want to go to 
whatever country you're in, United States, Canada, United Kingdom, Australia, Europe, Japan, uh, the Book of Quint is available for pre-order right now uh, wherever books are sold. Amazon, Waterstones, Barnes & Noble, Booktopia down in Australia, W.H. Smith. All you have to do is search Book of Quint by Ryan Daco. We all know there is Amazon. Amazon uh, has a very wide reach. Some of you may not have access to a bookstore, so Amazon might be your only place to order. For that, there I've already counted uh, 13. I've counted 13 different countries that Amazon is listing the Book of Quint. But let's talk about the independent bookshops. Now, this is this is where it comes down to. This is not just about selling a book. Remember, the Book of Quint, if you listen all the way back on episode 20 of the Jaws Obsession, this was all part of the plan. What my goal was to put the global Jaws fan base in a position to where their voices could be heard all at once. And that is what we're doing here. What has happened here with the Book of Quint is is that it has become a de facto petition to Universal, Universal Studios, Universal Pictures, to consider the making of a prequel to the greatest movie ever made, certainly the greatest in their catalog, Jaws. And that is what we're looking at here, is that this is not just about uh, acquiring or buying a book or, or selling a book. This is a one. This is the first time that a fan base has a chance to come together in real time, stand at once, and show Universal your support that you would like to see a feature film a prequel to Jaws that does not exploit the movie Jaws, but actually enhances the story and the characters in Jaws. That's what we're doing here. So Amazon is out there and it is very convenient. But if you can, if you do have the ability and you are, if you are out there listening right now, you may have been here from episode one of the Jaws Obsession or the Indiegogo campaign for the Book of Quint, or you may have gone, you may have just, this might be your first episode right here episode 69 you can play a part in this this is across the world this is the these are the jaws fans and fans of just great storytelling coming together as the numbers increase as the book of quint moves around the world universal i assure you is watching and they are going to be taking note And if there is a demand, we will see this move to the next levels. So that's why I am asking that if if you are within earshot of a local bookstore, if you have access to an independent bookshop, a brick and mortar store, that a retail store that sells novels, sells books, if you could go down there and order and pre-order the book of Quint, that is one of the ways that you can actually stand up and actually make your voice heard. Now, what's going to happen is you're actually going to meet people and you're going to talk about Jaws. Many of them will probably never have heard of the Book of Quinn, and you're going to be able to explain about that. You can tell them, you can send them our way to the Jaws obsession. You can talk about the process, how you heard this, if you followed followed it along. And what happens is, is those retailers, they might order not just a book for you. They might order one for themselves. They might order a few. They might say, hey, we have a lot of Jaws customers here. And they will tell. So one person tells another, tells another. This is as close to a grassroots campaign that we will ever have in writing and books, but also into Hollywood, is that this is how it's done. It all started with a book with Jaws. It can all start again with the book of Quint. And, and that is where we stand right now. If you already have the Book of Quint, maybe if you want to gift the book to someone that you know, a fisherman, a fellow fisherman, maybe uh, someone that you know that's a Jaws fan or a boater or a, a, or a fan of high adventure, seafaring stories, this is the book for them. You don't even have to watch Jaws to enjoy the Book of Quint. It is a standalone story. In the few book signings and book events that we had, one of my favorite things to experience was when someone held the Book of Quint for the first time. That smile. It's there's a smile. There's it, it's this Jaws fans are just they were looking at something that wow, it's it this is real. There's something more. It's more to the story and it's just great to add on to this universe in such a way that it just seems right. This is all a learning experience for me, and um, it's exciting at the same time. So I thank you for not just not just supporting the book up till now. One of the, uh, one of the things I wrote 
in the letter to the, all the early Book of Quint re- readers, the backers to the Indiegogo campaign, the letter I sent with each book, it introduced the book, but it described that it said that you are now an ambassador for Quint and his backstory. For all of you that have had the opportunity to read the Book of Quint, you are now an ambassador. So I am now asking for your assistance in your reviews. You have sent me the best reviews ever. The greatest reviews were coming in for the novel. So now those reviews are going to take on a whole new form. We are going to need you to go out, fan out across these sites from Amazon, Waterstones, Barnes & Noble, W.H. Smith, wherever you can leave a book review, we are going to need you to post that review. The, the, the wonderful five-star reviews that you sent me, just we, we're going to need you to translate that over there. Most of these sites, they will not accept reviews until the book is released. The only site that I'm noticing now is Barnes & Noble. It's the major book retailer for the United States and North America. They're accepting reviews right now. So if you go over and put a review in for the Book of Quint, it will post up. We're going to need to um, let these retailers know that there's a demand for this because there are people out there that don't listen to podcasts or they might not are they might not be aware of the jaws obsession or even what the book of quint is so this might this book might have to reach the bookshelves to where it's sitting there and someone walks by and discovers it we need to we need to get to that level that opportunity and in order to do that we have to show that there's a demand for the novel if there's great reviews out there and if there's a great pre-order campaign going on, then these retailers will order more and they'll stock their shelves. There's a in, Going into the holiday season, into the Christmas season, there's a lot of competition for shelf space. It is a cutthroat world out there, this publishing business, because there are a lot of books printed and published every year and everybody's clawing for space. So the only thing we can really do is we can only show our passion and our support for this novel. So that's what I'm asking you to do. If you have read the Book of Quint, please leave a review at some of these sites. Just keep watching these sites. Look up the Book of Quint on these sites. Even the search algorithm, when you look up the Book of Quint on Amazon, it actually triggers an algorithm. And what happens is that it, it, it drops discounts onto the price of the book it actually makes the book go higher into the search database. It's very intricate, and I'm learning a lot, and so it's exciting to see. I thank everyone that's already pre-ordered. I'm getting emails of, from people that are, pre, uh, that are pre-ordering the book, and they're excited. This is going to be a ground game. It's not. We can't leave it up to just Amberly Publishing and their sales department is that this is going to have to go to the fans. We're going to have to take to the streets. And we're going to have to make our voices known. Like Ed Rodriguez, he communicated with me that he's taking his book of Quint and he's going to go down to his two local bookstores and he's going to just go right into his spiel about what this book is. And he's going to make a couple of pre-orders for gifts. And that's going to just increase our bubble because that's what we're doing. We're just expanding this tent, this big tent, and we're increasing the bubble and we're just bringing people inside into our sphere of influence. We're just going to stay focused on the end result. And that end result is why can't we have a prequel to the movie Jaws for 2025 for late summer, fall of 2025, uh, 2025 for the 50th anniversary of Jaws. Why can't we have a prequel? We can. We just have to stand together and make our voices known. So if you are out there, if you have access to social media, share these links. Look it up on whatever retailer you choose, Amazon, Waterstones, Barnes & Noble, Booktopia, W.H. Smith. There's so many of them. Cole's Books. And copy and paste the link. Send it to a friend. Get it out into your social media. Tell everybody that the, the Jaws universe is expanding far beyond expectations. You know, you read what others had done, and you, and you took the next step. You didn't earn the knowledge for yourselves, so you don't take any responsibility for it. You stood on the shoulders of geniuses uh, to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it and packaged it and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and now you're selling it. You want to sell it. Well, I, I don't think you're giving us our due credit. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. 
before we get to this Jaws talk on episode 69, I wanted to address a few concerns that some of you have brought up to me. Some of you have been reaching out to me on Instagram or over at through the email at jawsob2025 at gmail.com in regards to there's some confusion into as readers are reaching out to pre-order the Book of Quint, there is some confusion because there might be imitation works or parodies or other works that will be popping up. And that is where we have to all be together on this, and we all have to make sure that we are honing the signal down, we're getting rid of all the noise that is out there. When we're attempting to do something this big, this massive of a rollout on a global scale, there will be confusion. It's the fog of war. I don't write under a pen name, no alternate titles. There can only be one Book of Quint, and it is called The Book of Quint. And my name is Ryan Daco. I am the author. So if you search, when you're going to pre-order, if you search The Book of Quint with my name, Ryan Daco, you should generally get The Book of Quint to show up. Going forward, as we saw with the original novel of Jaws, going forward, there will be other works out there. Remember, ideas are many. Everyone has ideas. The idea for a Jaws prequel is not new. We did learn through previous episodes that the idea of a Quint backstory was tackled by Howard Sackler and Steven Spielberg back in 1975-1976 era. And until uh, Zanuck and Brown decide to stay with Monster Shark Part 2, then go that trajectory, that, that idea has been around about this fascinating backstory to Quint. Many have gone before and tried this, on, but not on this level. There is a process behind the Book of Quint that has to be appreciated, and that is why it will show on the page when, um, as the book carries on over the next year into 2024 and 2025 and beyond, that you're going to see this wasn't a flash-in-the-pan idea thrown together at the last minute. I felt at the time, and that's why I played the Jeff Goldblum line from Jurassic Park, is that at the time, I had to take great pause and figure out, I could write this book, but should I write this book? Am I the right man for the job? Am I right at this point in my life? And I look back at all the experiences that I have had through the U.S. Coast Guard, through sailing on, ice, on an icebreaker from North Pole to Antarctica. I've crossed the Bering Sea four times, a boarding officer, search and rescue team member in a small boat station for the Coast Guard as well. There, I have spent time on the water. I was an underwater deep sea diver. I was a commercial diver, uh, uh, underwater welder. So I, there, there are many experiences that I drew upon as well as going through the ranks of the independent filmmaking world with my screenwriting background, and then couple that with my work on power lines, uh, just the experience of life in general, that I felt that I had enough to draw on to be able to tell the story to Quint in the, in the proper way, in the highest regard. And that is where I started the Jaws obsession was to take this case to the fans. Because to myself, I believe Jaws is not just the greatest movie ever made. The fans behind it that appreciate this movie hold it in the highest regard. And this character of Quint is massively important to many people around the world. Millions. I wanted to see him taken care of with the greatest love and the greatest respect. And the book of Quint is born out of that. That is why I started the Jaws obsession was to take my case to the fans of Jaws and not just to highlight uh, credentials on a personal level, but show where this story was born was in the details of the movie of the film Jaws, 1975's Jaws. So within those details is where this story was born. And then my personal life and experiences were able to flesh some of those details out in the, in, to make it as accurate and uh, realistic as possible. That all went into the writing of the Book of Quint. It's not just my 40 year, 45 years of life, but it's also the love and the passion behind this movie Jaws that fueled this. So when you are pre-ordering, you search The Book of Quint by Ryan Daco. That's the one that we're going to all have to be on the same page. We have to ignore anything that might come about. And, and, and if you ask me, when you see other works pop up, that is because we are on to something special here. I see positives in all of this. We are hitting the right notes and that the universe is ready for a Jaws prequel. Universal is watching. Now, everyone can have an idea and they can rush to write that idea 
or they can rush to make that idea into a movie or a novel. The priority I looked at most importantly was the execution of the idea. Therefore, in the past, we've seen for every Armageddon, there was a deep impact. For every Braveheart, there was a Rob Roy. For a Tombstone, you had Wyatt Earp. So you would always have other works that would come about, but you could always tell there was always a feel to the one that had that had the execution down better. Okay, which which project executed it better? The discussion of AI, which has been a hot topic lately with the writer's strike out of Hollywood and the talks of artificial intelligence and how it's being utilized. I am watching other authors talk about how they are utilizing artificial intelligence to enhance or help their writing. AI is not going anywhere. Chat GPT, uh, I think Google has barred. There's different AI platforms that are going to come out and they're only going to get better. But the simple fact is, is that going forward, from my personal point of view, and I'm just a classic type of type of guy, I like old movies, and I just feel that nothing will ever replace the human condition, the human experience. That if you live your life, and you've lived your life full enough, that you are full of experiences that you can draw upon in order to be a better writer, a better artist, a better musician. That's where it all is born. And taking shortcuts using artificial intelligence, it's going to show when you do the Pepsi challenge in the future with artworks that are done with even if the art, even if there was a little bit of AI that was used to assist to get over maybe some writer's block, you're going to notice there's going to be something missing there. It's the ones that are homegrown. It's the folks that are going to be drawing from life experiences that are still going to be able to turn out wonderful pieces of art, wonderful pieces of writing, filmmaking, and music. We are on a frontier right now. Anytime technology brings us to a new frontier, you always have chaos. And we, we notice this. It's just like that far and away. I don't know if any of you have ever seen that. Far and Away, directed by Ron Howard, starring Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. It's a movie that I've always appreciated, and I always enjoy watching with my sisters. There's a scene at the end where there, where everyone is lined up, and it's the uh, it's Oklahoma, I think. It's the land grab as society is starting to move west, and they're giving land away. So everybody's lined up at the starting line, and then the gun gets the cannon gets fired, and everybody takes off, and everybody's rushing to go grab their flag and throw their flag and, and a stake in the ground to claim that piece of land. But in doing that, there's people getting shot, there's horses that are wiping out, there's wagons that are tipping over. It's just absolute chaos. Now we noticed that when in a technological frontier like this, back in the late 90s. With the internet, when that was coming out, we saw that everybody had an idea for a website and everybody put their website out. But the websites that executed better were the ones that survived. Many of them faltered and failed. And that was where you had the dot com crash. With artificial intelligence, we're at this frontier where we're going to be seeing many different projects come out and all sorts of things and people that are, will use this tool Maybe not as a tool, but they'll use it more as a crutch. And then there will be projects coming out, and they'll have that feel, that AI feel to it. But it's the ones, it's the artists, it's the ideas that get executed correctly. The execution is what is most important here. And those are the, those are the projects that will go on, and they will pass that Pepsi challenge. They're going to say that you're just going to have a, it's going to have a different feel as you read it, as you listen to it, as you watch it. It's going to have a different feel. And that I can tell you, I can, I can absolutely assure you that the Book of Quint has that feel and the feedback I'm getting back from early readers that people just believe it is just right. It feels right. This is how it should be. And that's how the, the Book of Quint, it does Robert Shaw's performance justice and it adds more weight to what that great actor put into that role and gave us that performance in Jaws, it really enhances the whole aspect of this greatest movie of all time, Jaws. As you're listening to me right now, this was all started to earn your trust, but also for you to have the confidence going forward that there can only be one book of Quint. This is called The Book of Quint. And it's myself, I am the author, Ryan Daco. You can also look up on these sites, you can look up the ISBN number. There's a 10-digit ISBN number and a 13-digit ISBN number. If everyone goes to amberly-books.com, Amberly spelling A-M-B-E-R-L-E-Y-books.com, you can actually look up the Book of Quint there, and you can actually see this ISBN number. The 13-digit number is 978-139-812-2475. 
Just put that number into any of these search bars for Waterstones, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Booktopia, W.H. Smith, Cole's Books, or at your local bookshop. Just have give them that ISBN number, and they'll be able to look that up at the desk, and they'll be able to pull up the Book of Quint. We all have to be on that same page because there are more works in the pipeline. I have directions that I would like to go in in 2024 and 2025 and beyond, and in order to do that, the Book of Quint needed to establish an expanded Jaws universe. And that's what we're doing. We're expanding the Jaws universe from Jaws 1 and 2, but we're building it out. The Book of Quint goes on the front of those. That is going to start off this equation. It is going to be that ground level foundation that we are going to build upon. And that is why I want everybody to make sure when you are ordering this, it is called the Book of Quint, and my name is Ryan Daco. I do not use any pen names. Everything is changing, and it's changing so fast. I mentioned in the last episode, it's like we were at the top of a roller coaster hill, and now we're going down, and it's just picking up speed and going. Every day, there's something new coming in. Uh, just today, I didn't know. Yesterday, we had no idea about the ebook or information, and now we are today. We find out there's going to be an ebook on November fifteenth, two thousand twenty-three. That's how fast things are moving here on the ground. It's very exciting to see kinetic energy. That's it. We're we we've converted all that potential energy that was the Jaws universe, and we have converted it into kinetic energy. And wow, it, there's a lot of electricity in the air with that. I wanted to get to one review over here. There is a review uh, that was posted. A review was posted over at Apple Podcasts. Another five-star review comes in from Chels AGBF. The review reads, Devotion to the dorsal fin. It takes titanic talent and a good deal of nerve to endeavor to add such a universe. The more I become acquainted with the world of Jaws and its fandom, the more I find passionate fans and a tight canon successfully adding to the story while pleasing a particular and dedicated fan base makes Ryan, with the help of John, an absolute legend. The Jaws obsession is so engaging, so thought-provoking, and so smart that even formerly disinterested Jaws fans are instantly hooked. Fishing pun. Ryan is in the unique position of having real-life experience on the water, the ability to create a vision, and the technical savvy to educate. The Jaws Obsession is 10 out of 10. Wow, thank you very much, Chelsea GBF, for the great review. Ryan is an absolute legend. I am blushing right now while reading that. The Jaws Obsession is so engaging. This review picks up on the real-life experience on the water, the, bil- the ability to create a vision, technical savvy to educate. Thank you so much. That's great. F- those five-star reviews really help the algorithm over there at on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. I know there was some trouble with people trying to enter five stars over at Spotify, and uh, we're trying to get to the bottom of that. But that's great that people are trying to enter good reviews on all these platforms because that helps the algorithm and it helps us spread the word about the Jaws obsession. Great review. Great to see. We also had just hot off the presses. We had Sean O'Rourke. If you are a fan of the movie Jaws and you are a fan of the book Jaws, you are going to love the book of Quint. This is a prequel book, 400 page prequel book. Now, this is the hard copy, but it's now going to be released worldwide in paperback. Okay? November 15th, we order it right now in the United Kingdom, Australia, Europe, and Japan. And January 23rd of 2024, it will be available in the United States and Canada. It is a scary tale. It is about post-traumatic stress. Remember when Quint tells that story about being in the in Indianapolis? and how it sank and the sharks were eating all the soldiers. Oh man, this book is so amazing and it's gonna make a hell of a movie. And that was Sean O'Rourke, absolutely. Do you feel the electricity? Do you feel the energy in his voice? That he was, that's over his, uh, that was one of his videos he did over at YouTube. And wow, it will make one heck of a movie out there. Uh, that Universal will is watching. They will take notice of these numbers when they watch the books start reaching the readers' hands, the reviews, the excitement. This is all possible, and we just have to stay on target. We got to stay on the on our heading, keep our bearing. True North Agent Bill Pettit over at the William Pettit Agency. 
He is constantly working those angles, working those avenues. There's so many meetings going on, and that's where we're at right now. We are at a place where we, where the fans now have the stage. Now we have gotten it to that highest level in the land, in the world. We've gotten that book to where it needs to be, and now it's time for the fans to enjoy the book and to let their voices be heard. Great to see. Thank you so much. Wow, that's great. Thank you, Sean O'Rourke, out there. He started all of this. Do you remember that when he did the unboxing video? And from there, that's how we that's how Agent Bill Pettit got involved. And it just started steamrolling from there. This has been one wild year. One wild year. 2023. Who would have thought that we would be right here right now with uh taking pre-orders on Amazon, Waterstones, Barnes and Noble, Booktopia, WH Smith, Cole's Books? So many different book venues to so many ways to now be able to uh, to find the book of Quint. Uh, just exciting to see. With that, I think we're all on the same page. So let's now jump into the greatest movie of all time and let's figure out the actual heart of this episode. What are the ages of the Brody boys? Mom, I got cut. I got hit by a vampire. You guys are playing on those swings. What? Those swings are dangerous. Yes, Michael and Sean Brody. What are the ages of Michael and Sean Brody? And if we discover and we'll lock into an age of Michael Brody and Sean Brody by just laying down that fact, can we extract more out of the relationships between the characters in Jaws? And I think we can. We're going to do that right now. This was from an email that I received from Mark. He said, hi, Ryan. I just want to contact you again to say how pleased I am that the Book of Quint will be released in paperback form and with what will eventually be a worldwide release. As soon as you broke the news, I paused the podcast and immediately pre-ordered the book on Amazon. The gold silhouette will contrast nicely with the silver on my hardback copy that I am sure will be a collector's item one day, although I'd never sell it at any price. I've been lucky enough to have had a couple of my emails to you read out on the podcast, and I think it's great how you've created and galvanized a community of Jaws fans from around the world who are excited about the future of the franchise thanks to you and your hard work. I will be rereading The Book of Quint in its new form on November 15th, and I'm sure I'll enjoy it as much as the first time. I'm thankful that I managed to discover the Jaws obsession in time time to snag number 36 of 50 of The Book of Quint and would have kicked myself if I'd missed the boat on this, pun intended. In terms of future podcast ideas... Well, let me let me pause right there. Thanks, Mark. Thank you very much, obviously, the, for, for getting in line, for pre-ordering the Book of Quint in paperback on its worldwide release. And I appreciate the kind words about the podcast and galvanizing the community. We've that's all we've that that is the that is probably one of the biggest uh, sources of pride here at the Jaws Obsession is having a a venue, having an area where everybody who loves this movie can come together and look at the intricacies and can have a little retrospective with each episode. Great to see. Uh, Thank you for those kind words. Mark continues on. In terms of future podcast ideas, is it worth investigating the age of the Brody children in Jaws 2? To me, it seems like almost 10 years have passed for the boys, But for the chief and the mayor, it feels like events of the original film were only about two or three years ago. Maybe I'm overthinking it. I kind of view the film as an early slasher similar to Halloween or Friday the 13th with the killer picking off teenagers. Jaws 2 is still my second favorite shark movie and has some great action and performances as well as another iconic and electrifying finale. That pun was intended too. Best of luck for the paperback launch, the screenplay, and hopefully the movie. Keep up the great work. It is very much appreciated. That's Mark Chase in Colchester, England. Boy, thank you for the great email, Mark. Great idea. I I replied to him right away, and I said this is uh, something worth investigating. I agree with what Mark says about Jaws 2. Jaws 2 is a fine film. It is not the greatest film, but it is a fine sequel it it holds its own. My history with Jaws 2 is uh, I was born in 1978, so I saw Jaws 2 when it would reach HBO. As a youngster, um, my family, my household had HBO, and Jaws 2 would came on, and I was uh, a- absolutely fascinated with sharks, fascinated with the film. Uh, that That started my love of Jaws. So I saw Jaws as a prequel when I... 
after uh, many uh, after many days of nagging my father, he ran down to the Rite Aid corner store where they had an early video rental wall, and he rented Jaws and brought it back on VHS, and I was able to watch Jaws as a prequel to Jaws 2. So that is probably the earliest, um, how, that, that is how the seeds were planted for how I've worked this story backwards into the Book of Quint, is that I always saw Jaws as a prequel in that it was explaining what I first initially was introduced to, Chief Brody, Amity Island, the orca that's underwater. Now I was realizing what the orca was outside, like what, that, that the orca was actually a part of Jaws. So my mindset was changed in that I saw the value of how Jaws added more information to Jaws 2. It does have some great performances. I think Roy Scheider's performance in Jaws 2 he was not phoning it in. We all know he did not want to be in Jaws 2, but he w- he was able to get out of a contract with Universal. He had a, a two or three pictures left on a contract, and they said, you don't have to make the other two if you just make Jaws 2. So he said, okay. He made Jaws 2, and he was able to get out of that contract. But while he's making Jaws 2, he, the many things, he really plays that post-traumatic stress theme really well. And that is uh, that carries over from Jaws. So the impact of why is this guy so, so stressed out when he discovers that there's a shark off of Amity Island, it's because of that we are not too far removed from the events of Jaws when we watch Jaws 2. If we establish some things in using Jaws 2, using some clues, we actually can work our way backwards into Jaws. So a lot, there, there are some misconceptions. Is Michael Brody closer to Sean's age? Is Sean closer to Michael Brody? What are the, what are the exact ages of these kids, of, of the Brody children? We were introduced to Michael and Sean Brody at the beginning of Jaws. Mom, I got cut. I got hit by a vampire. You guys were playing on those swings. What? All right, so that's Michael Brody comes in with the cut hand. And we all know Sean from his uh, songs on the beach. And so that, let's leave Jaws and let's go right into Jaws 2. First, we have to establish dates. Now, we're going to be operating off of two things. If you go back all the way to the Jaws Obsession episode 16, Jaws Timeline Explained, we introduced to the world a Jaws official Jaws calendar that we proved that Jaws takes place over 12 calendar days. It is irrefutable that that calendar does hold up over scrutiny if you watch the events of Jaws and you take in the clues. So if you want to know where we're going to be getting some of these dates, you have to go to Jaws Obsession Episode 16, Jaws Timeline Explained. You can also go to Jaws Obsession Episode 44, the Brody Calendar Contest. And that's where we show that what is the date on the Brody kitchen calendar. It is definitely 1974. So we know that Jaws takes place in 1974. The events of Jaws in inside the Jaws universe takes place in 1974. So now, using that same methodology, and we're going to go into Jaws 2. So when at the beginning, in the beginning credit sequence, we have Chief Brody on the ferry ride, on the ferry in, um, on the Amity on Time 2 ferry, which is uh, crossing Amity Harbor. If you look closely at the license plate, if you look closely at the license plate on his police vehicle, it actually has an inspection sticker of December 1977. So that would indicate that the inspection is up December of 1977. So the year that we're looking at Jaws 2 inside the Jaws universe is 1977. This would be the summer of 77. So we all have to keep that in mind that Jaws events in Jaws 1 took place in the summer of 74. And now we have visual proof in the canon of Jaws 2 that those events take place in summer of 77, 1977. So we're, we're going to focus on Michael Brody. Michael Brody is actually has a, has a much larger role in Jaws 2. And uh, I want to highlight some of the scenes he's in here. So there's a scene at the beginning during the ceremony, the ribbon cutting ceremony in Jaws 2. Yes where they switch over to the kids. What we're dealing is we're dealing with high school students. We have the Amity High School Marching Band playing music. 
How old is your cousin? She's 17. She's a senior. I'm not crazy about blind dates. So I believe the character is Brooke. I'm not as savvy on Jaws 2 as I am in Jaws. But uh, so, so I believe it's Brooke is the character that he's talking to. Michael Brody is discussing with Brooke about a blind date with her cousin Jackie. And she says that her cousin Jackie is 17 and she's a senior. Um, that, so this indicates the, the age range that we're dealing with, but we're not quite pinned down on Michael Brody's age yet. But at least we all know that we're dealing with high school students and she is trying to line him up with a blind date with her cousin Jackie, who's 17 and a senior. About eight, that's almost nine minutes into that's at eight minutes and 49 seconds in the film of Jaws in Jaws 2. We're going to skip ahead now to the 27th minute of Jaws 2. Look, this kid is 17. We've talked about him getting a job before. I know you're right. I wish you could spend some time with him. Take a half day off. How can so that is the 27th minute. We have a discussion with Martin Brody discussing um, with Ellen Brody about sh about Michael Brody getting a job, a summer job. And he says, this kid is 17. Look, this kid is 17. We've talked about him getting a job before. So definitely now, so we have it right into the screenplay. It makes it into the canon of the Jaws universe that Michael Brody is 17 in the events of Jaws 2. We do know that the events of Jaws 2 are after the tourists have arrived the 4th of July. Why do we know that? Is because later on, after if we speed up to the 33rd minute in the movie, we're actually going to get a one line of dialogue that's going to tell us exactly where in the summer that we are landing when with the events of Jaws 2. Summer Reynolds. I think we have a hell of a good season going for us. Swell, Larry, but I have to talk to you alone. We're alone. So the mayor says we have a hell of a good season going for us. So now we're talking about we are deep after J the 4th of July. We are into the summer tourist season. So probably in the events of August, maybe late late summer, almost not not maybe not uh, late late July to early August is what we're looking at here with that line that summer Reynolds. I think we have a hell of a good season going for us. Well, Larry, but I have to talk to you alone. Hell of a good season going for us. Definitely not the 4th of July, because we know the 4th of July is the beginning of the season. Okay? So let's keep all of that in mind. We have Michael Brody at 17. We have, we're well into, we're after 4th of July. Okay? So now we can go back to Jaws, and we can all remember the line... Birthday tomorrow. I don't want him on the ocean. He's not on the ocean. He is in a boat. He's not going to go in the water. So she says, Martin, it's his birthday tomorrow. Now, if you go back to the official Jaws movie timeline by the Jaws obsession here, that this is the town hall meeting and the get out of the boat line. That's on Monday, June 30th. So that is the, the what we're, we're in the evening of Monday, June 30th. And how did we get to? So, uh, so right there. When she says it's his birthday tomorrow, we know that Michael Brody's birthday is on July 1st, okay? So now, since we know Michael, Bro Brody, Michael Brody's birthday is on July 1st, and we know that Martin Brody says this kid is 17, and it's after the 4th of July in Jaws 2, then we basically know that in Jaws 2, Michael Brody was... He's a fresh 17-year-old. So we got to think 17-year-old in 1977 minus three years to 74. Now, in the events of Jaws, we know that Michael Brody is 13 at the start of the movie. Mom, I got cut. I got hit by a vampire. And then the line that it's his birthday tomorrow. Please, Martin, it's his birthday tomorrow. I don't want him on the ocean. Then it's his birthday where he turns 14. In the middle of Jaws, when we see Michael Brody in the hospital. All right, you are. You're going to miss me tonight? You can watch television. Want me to bring anything from home? My cars. Your cars. What about ice cream? Coffee. Coffee. So right there, we know that Michael Brody is now 14 years old. If we put all of this information together, we have... Uh, Michael Brody, we watched Michael Brody go from 13 to 14, and then in Jaws 2, he is 17 years old. If you do all that math together, you subtract 17 from 77, 
we know that Michael Brody was born in 1960. So that's when uh, Ellen Brody and Martin Brody had the birth of their first son, Michael Brody, in 1960. Okay, with Sean Brody, we have to use... uh, Sean Brody is a little more difficult because his age is not referenced in Jaws or Jaws 2. Uh, The actor was Jay Mello, and he was five going on six when Jaws was made in 1974. Five going on six seems like the right age. And then if you add three years in Jaws 2... You see young Sean Brody, he would be eight going on nine in the events of Jaws 2. So that all matches up. So if he's five going on six, that means we're looking at six years old in 1974, that Sean Brody's birth date would have been in 1968. So now we are looking at the Brody family um, with Michael being born in 1960 and then Sean being born uh, in 1968. And then now that's where we're seeing we're meeting the Brody family and the events of Jaws in 1974. We're narrowing this down fairly accurately that we're looking at a five five year old um, in Jaws and a 13 year old as the two as the Brody boys. What I find interesting is this is that if we go back into Jaws 2, and this is where Jaws 2 is very important, establishing some really the, some very interesting facts. If we go into Jaws 2, one of the characters we meet in Jaws 2 is Larry Vaughn Jr. Uh, Larry Vaughn Jr., played by the actor David Elliott. Hey, I thought you said she was coming with us. Well, obviously she's not. You want to talk about it? You want to swim home? So Larry Vaughn Jr. plays almost a, um, a rival to Michael Brody in this movie, in, in Jaws 2. So what that is, what and there's one key scene where he kind of makes, where Michael Brody uh, gets grounded by uh, Martin Brody and says that he can't take his boat out because Martin believes there's another shark out there and everyone else is going to go sailing and he says he doesn't want Michael to go sailing. So there's a scene where the kids are hanging out at the local bar And they're all talking amongst themselves. But what I found interesting is there's a little exchange between Larry Vaughn Jr. and Michael Brody coming up here. (laughs) Hey, Mike, you going to go? Yeah, why not? Because you might be painting toilets at the beach. (laughs) Very funny. So there you have it. You have uh, Tina asks Mike, are you going to go? And he says, hey, Mike, you going to go? Yeah, why not? Because you might be painting toilets at the beach. <laughs> Very funny. Mike, you want to go? He says, yeah, why not? And Larry Vaughn Jr. comes in and says, because you might be painting toilets at the beach. Because earlier, the summer job that he had lined up, he's painting the uh, cabanas, the changing cabanas on the beach. So by that little exchange by Larry Vaughn um, kind of throwing shade towards Michael Brody shows me that they're the same age that they're kind of rivals here, that Larry Vaughn's kind of seen that Michael Brody, the uh, that Jackie, he's kind of jealous because Jackie, the cousin of Brooke, is asking to go on his sailing boat and not Larry Vaughn, and Larry Vaughn has a hot rod sailing boat as well. So what are we looking at here is we're looking at Larry Vaughn Jr. is the same age. He's also 17. He's also going to be a senior in high school. This is the summer of these kids. This is their their they're over with their junior year. And now this is the summer before their senior year, the final year of high school in Amity High. So what we're looking at now is that Larry Vaughn Jr. is the same age as what I'm reading this is is Larry Vaughn Jr. is the same age as Michael Brody. So knowing that, knowing that, let's go back into Jaws and now this line leaves on a whole new meaning. Martin, Martin, my kids were on that beach too. My kids were on that beach too. So on the 4th of July beach in Jaws, what Mayor Vaughn is saying is that my kids were on that beach too. So one of those kids has to be Larry Vaughn Jr., who's the same age as Michael Brody. Now, this leads to uh, such a different dynamic. That this, this adds to the dynamic that Larry Vaughn and Chief Brody are somewhat rivals in that their families are mimicking the same age. They're almost the same age in children. 
And I find this interesting as you go into Jaws 2, you see the boys as they grow older. There's this tale of two cities going on, the Brody family and the Vaughn family. That's fascinating to myself in that what was Larry Vaughn Jr. doing on the 4th of July beach in Jaws? Also that Larry Vaughn Jr. is also into sailing as well. And I think this is very interesting in that Jaws, if you look at the banner that's going over Main Street right there, and it says the 50th annual regatta, Amity Island 4th of July celebration, the 50th annual regatta. We're looking at that there is a regatta that's actually of high importance. And is it possible that Michael Brody and Larry Vaughn Jr. competed against each other? in this regatta, maybe solo sailing or dual, uh, like team sailing where it's two men on each boat. And were, is, was that what, what happened in, uh, did that happen already with the regatta in Jaws 2? Did Michael Brody best Larry Vaughn Jr. and take the trophy? We don't know, but this is all very interesting stuff. These dynamics are playing on outside of the movies, outside of the narrative that we have. And by establishing these birth dates, we actually can tell more about the relationships between the characters going on. So now what we've just established here in this episode 69 is we showed how using information outside of Jaws, using information established from Jaws 2, we can actually work our way backwards and then we can extract more from the characterization that Mayor Vaughn and Chief Brody have very similar aged children and the family. So there's more of a rival, there's more of a rivalry going there. There is more of a dynamic playing here between Brody and Vaughn because I believe from what I'm seeing is because they have similar age children. And that leads into obviously Jaws 2 and beyond. What's interesting here is that we've just shown by establishing context, we can extract more subtext out of the performances of Jaws. That's the reasoning behind the book of Quint is we are now laying out that context. We're establishing context, and then you're going to be able to draw more subtext out of the performances in Jaws without ever changing Jaws. You're just going to perceive, you're going to see the characters differently when you know what is going on in their lives outside of the events that we see in the film. This might be the first, this will not be the last time we're going to use Jaws 2. We're actually going to expand this out. This is now the Jaws. It's, it's an expanded Jaws universe, and it's great to see. We're, going, we're, we're building this out. I want to thank Mark Chase from Colchester, England, for giving me uh, the opportunity to uh, dive into something that might be very trivial, but it actually means a lot more in the greater picture, such as the age of the Brody boys. Sean Brody and Michael Brody, this has been episode 69 of the Jaws Obsession. Thank you very much for listening. Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. I had a little drink of an hour ago. Where's the cat right to my head? Wherever I may roam, by land or sea or boat. Always great to be back and reporting to you and looking into the greatest movie of all time, Jaws. I just have such a ball with these episodes. I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you were having a lot of fun too. Thank you very much for everyone that's supporting this worldwide release rollout of the Book of Quint. Make sure you get your pre-orders in over at Waterstones, Barnes & Noble, Booktopia down in Australia, WH Smith in the UK, Amazon all over the world, multiple countries. Please visit your local bookstore and ask for the Book of Quint. Ask if they will be carrying it because there are many fans out there that do not know about us yet and it is going to be a it will be a wonderful time for discovery in 2024 as we see the book of quint reach a worldwide audience the movie jaws is copyrighted property of universal studios any references and sampling from the movie jaws in this episode is intended to fall within sections 107 of the copyright act Copyrighted materials are fairly used for the purposes of for the purposes purposes of criticism, comment, reporting, teaching, and research. The materials used here are protected by the fair use guidelines of Section 107 of the Copyright Act. All rights reserved to the copyright owners. It's out of here.
Again, thank you very much for tuning in for the latest episode. Please get those reviews to the Book of Quint. Any early readers, you can start logging on to barnesandnoble.com and put your reviews in. Thanks for listening. Until next episode, farewell and adieu and show me the way to go home. Thank you.